Hello, my name is Dr. Teresa Bacon Bagley. I'm a professor in the College of Health Professions at Grand Valley State University. Today we're going to look at the treatment modalities in an individual who has sustained a mild traumatic brain injury or a concussion. By the end of this module, you should be able to describe the standard management for a concussion within the first 24 hours after injury. Identify the members of the healthcare team and their role in the treatment of a concussion. And lastly, describe the items which are preventative in the development of a concussion or mild traumatic brain injury. Now, the mild traumatic brain injury or concussion may require no treatment other than rest and observation. The clinician who sees the patient may give instructions to watch for signs of any complications, such as severe headaches, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, and sleepliness. These manifestations may be a sign of further injury and need to be investigated. Now the observation for the first 24 hours after injury can occur at home or at a medical facility. Observation at home requires that a responsible person must be available to observe the individual. Criteria for being monitored at home also requires the following. A Glasgow Coma Scale of 15. Remember, that was the scale that assesses neurological functioning. They also have to have a normal examination. That means the physical exam that was done after the injury needs to be normal. And if one was done, the CT scan must be normal. These are some general guidelines that the clinician uses in order to determine whether or not a person with a concussion can be monitored at home. Now the observation instructions for those first 24 hours when a patient is monitored at home can include some of the following lists here. Awakening every two hours the first night. This awakening should be done and the patient should respond normally. In other words, they should wake up, they should identify who they are, where they're at, etc. In addition, patients should avoid strenuous activity for at least that first 24 hours. And then some of the things to look for are the inability to awaken, severe or worsening headache, confusion, restlessness, unsteadiness, or seizures, difficulty with vision, vomiting, fever, or stiff neck, urinary or bowel incontinence, and weakness or numbness. These are just examples of things to look for that could warrant further investigation. Some individuals may have to be monitored in a medical facility after a concussion. The criteria for management of a concussion at a medical facility may require the following. A Glasgow Coma Scale less than 15, remember that 15 is the highest score, and represents someone that has normal neurological functioning. An abnormal CT scan may warrant observation at a medical facility, and a follow-up study should be done within 24 hours. Seizures warrant admission, as well as any abnormal bleeding that the patient may have, may warrant admission to a medical facility after a concussion. Now the treatment of a concussion as well as post-concussion syndrome usually requires multidisciplinary approaches to the treatment. And it may involve one or more of the following healthcare providers. On this slide is a list of providers that may be utilized in the treatment of a concussion or post-concussion syndrome. We're actually gonna look at each one of these in the following slides. The physiatrist or rehab medicine specialist is a physician who has specialized training in restoring optimal function to people with injuries to muscles, bones, tissues, and nervous system. Physiatrists are usually located within rehabilitation centers. 
Now the role of the physiatrist in rehabilitation is to evaluate the individual's physical abilities along with their thinking as well as behavior. They also prescribe tailored therapy orders for physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. In addition, they prescribe medication as needed to manage mood, sleep, pain, and nutrition when appropriate. Medication can be used for things such as headaches, back pain, depression, or insomnia. Another individual that is part of the multidisciplinary team is the clinical psychologist or sometimes referred to as the neuropsychologist. The neuropsychologist will assess changes in thinking, memory, mood, and behavior. They will help the individual understand the changes that have occurred after the concussion. Some of the behavior manifestations associated with post-concussion may include manifestations such as anxiety, depression, irritability, mood lability, which is a rapid change in your mood, ups and downs, as well as difficulty in concentration. The physical therapist is also part of the multidisciplinary team, and a physical therapist is a specialist who treats neuromuscular or musculoskeletal issues associated with brain injury. The physical therapist will help the individual attain maximum physical independence by focusing on strength, balance, posture, as well as coordination. Physical therapists also help individuals with adaptive equipment associated with movement, such as wheelchairs, braces, and supports. Even in a concussion, if someone has an issue with balance, they may require some type of support, such as a cane, walker, etc. Motor coordination in the individual with a concussion may include one of the following. Difficulty with walking, difficulty with coordination, as well as balance problems. These are not the only types of issues that a physical therapist deals with, but they are the most common ones. An occupational therapist is another member of the multidisciplinary team. An occupational therapist develops a program designed to help the individual maximum independence in everyday life. This does not just include the work environment, but it also includes the home environment. In many cases, individuals with a TBI or concussion have to relearn, to some degree or another, skills associated with daily living, such as cooking, doing laundry, budgeting, banking, grocery shopping, and self-care. An occupational therapist can assess the individual's readiness to return to school and work. And they can devise a program for both the individual and workplace or school that ensures maximum success. Another individual that is included in the multidisciplinary team is the speech language pathologist. Brain injury, even concussion, can cause a wide variety of issues related to speech and language. It could include problems such as understanding and producing language, difficulty producing clear speech sounds, fluency issues, as well as difficulty swallowing. The speech language pathologist assesses the individual's impairments and then develops a plan designed to meet the needs of the individual. Depending upon the level of impairment, treatment could include helping the individual relearn how to make sounds, or it could include the introduction of alternative communication methods such as sign language or computerized devices. The recreational therapist, another member of the multidisciplinary team, introduces both fun and function to the TBI individual. Using recreational activities that the patient finds enjoyable, the recreational therapist can improve the cognitive, physical, emotional, social, and leisure needs 
of the patient. A recreational therapist shows the individual that life can be fun again, while simultaneously improving their skills and helping them return to maximum function. Lastly, I'd like to mention the social worker, who is a very integral part of the multidisciplinary team. The social worker provides the individual with information about community resources and helps plan for discharge and return to the community. A social worker can provide the following assistance. Determining your eligibility for benefits, such as Medicaid and Social Security. Making referrals to community resources for the individual or the family and providing ongoing support counseling to help you adjust to a new situation. Now we've learned a lot about the roles of members in the multidisciplinary team in treating a concussion. Remember that the multidisciplinary team not only plays an integral role in treating the patient with a concussion, but also plays an integral role in treating the patient with any type of head injury, whether it's a moderate or severe head injury. Future strategies in the prevention and treatment of TBI in the Wounded Warrior have been a major focus. There are two areas of focus. One is on education of an individual that has sustained a concussion, and the other is prevention. In education, these are the major focus points. Education and support for the patient's family, rest and avoidance of other injuries or another injury, individual and group therapies to support the family as well as the patient who is injured, medication, including symptom management, and rehabilitation, whether it's acute, subacute, or community reentry. To prevent further injuries, the following items have been suggested. Rest to prevent further re-injury, education regarding risk-taking behaviors that could lead to further injury, neurometabolic changes in concussion, as well as the wearing of helmets and vests. Now this is the end of the module on traumatic brain injury and the different treatment modalities after a concussion. I hope that this module provided you with information regarding the multidisciplinary team and their role, as well as ways to future prevent additional concussions or mild traumatic brain injury. Thank you.